Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the meeting of the West Glamorgan Archives Committee. Um, first of all, do we have apologies for absence? Yes. Yeah, I've got quite a few, Chair. From councillors Peter Black, Lyndon Jones, Elliot King, Robert Smith, Anne Ridian Mizen, and Louise Miskell as well. Thank you very much. Are there any disclosures of personal on and prejudicial interests, please? Um, yes, from myself, um, a personal interest as I'm a member of staff. Thank you, Andrew. I should also take this opportunity to welcome um, Chris Saunders. Chris, I believe you're, you're joining us uh, because the function is transferring to the culture department in Neath Batalbas. And of course, it's also there for Craig's last meeting. So I shall conclude with my thanks, but I just wanted to welcome you, uh, Chris, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the invite. Uh, can I remind everybody, if if you do have uh, mobile phones, please can you turn them off uh, or turn them to silent for the duration of the meeting? Thank you. Um, so the next item are the minutes of the last meeting. Um, I will assume that they have been read. So may I please have your approval that they are a correct record of the meeting? Yes, yeah. Janet proposed. Yes. All approved. Thank you very much. Uh, before we move on to the election of vice chairs for the municipal year, just uh, Kim, is there anything that you wish to raise from, from the minutes or is everything contained in your report that you wish to mention? Uh, no, I think everything's covered in the, uh, the uh, report for this meeting. OK, thank you very much. So our next item, <clears throat> excuse me, is to elect uh, the vice chairs for the municipal year. Um, Gareth, do we have any nominations for that? No nominations. Customer practice for the new members is that we have one from Swansea and one from Nice Patal, but then the chair then when the, if the Lord Lieutenant isn't present. Right. So if I can have a, a nomination from Swansea. I know we only have one Swansea member here. From our <clears throat> uh, Swansea members, um, Jess, Robert, I believe you're online. Are there any nominations from yourselves? Okay. Well, uh, perhaps we'll, we'll defer that to next time, given that uh, we are a bit short of members. Um, but Neath but all but members, uh, are, are there any nominations for the vice chair from, from yourselves? No nominations? Well, Craig? Chair, I wonder whether you'd be content with us um, if we're deferring Swansea's um, nomination, whether we could also defer Neath Patalbert to the next meeting as well. We can do some logistics in the back one then to work out who would be the best person from Neath Patalbert to be put forward. Yes, thank you for that suggestion, Craig. We will certainly do that. It could be on the agenda for the next meeting and hopefully everybody will be prepared to uh, respond to that item. Probably caught you all a bit unawares. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Kim, may I hand over to you, please? Thank you, Chair. You need to turn your... Um, so, good morning, everybody. Um, the report, uh, you've all had a, a receipt of the report, and I'm just going to run through it section by section as per usual. And uh, as per usual, I also start with the use of the service. Um, because uh, we've reached the end of the financial year 2022-23, I've also got the statistics for use in the past financial year 2022-23, 20, uh, um, which do show that we are steadily climbing back in numbers in using the, the service after receiving a, a very big hit during the pandemic period and the, and the lockdowns. Um, that uh, where our numbers were extremely, extremely small and growing grew back very slowly. Um, it's still very low, but the um, the number of people using documents is the thing that's really um, uh, climbing back up again. Uh, the 
part of the the slowness of recovery is the uh, the number of family historians using the service and what i think anecdotally and i share this with colleagues across wales and, and further afield that um many family historians have learned how to uh, research family history um, without using archives nowadays so the um, uh, they can uh, subscribe online and a lot of people took out subscriptions during lockdown to the well-known websites uh, ancestry being the most common of them and they just haven't come back to to use the service so uh, if you were to visit the um, archives in Swansea Civic Centre uh, today you probably find there's maybe uh, an empty family history centre but a relatively busy archive search room. Um, things will change shortly and it's probably because I don't think I have included it in the report that the um, the Wales Broadcast Archive is due to open in the uh, Swansea search room on July the 11th, so um, just uh, under a month away. Um, we don't know how popular it will be. Um, however, I can report that um, the the main broadcast archive access to that is in the National Library of Wales in Aberystwyth, and what essentially we're doing is opening a very small branch of the National Library in our Swansea search room, um, and it has proved extremely popular. Um, we we don't know how popular it'll be in Swansea, but they, um, uh, the figures for use of the Wales Broadcast Archive in the National Library, I was at a meeting this week and apparently half the users at the National Library of Wales in Aberystwyth were coming to use the Wales Broadcast Archive. Um, they have put on a very big lounge for it, so you can you access it in various ways. Uh, but the um, uh, you can uh, sort of lounge around on a sofa and watch old television programs and so on, <laughs> or you can sit at a research desk and um, uh, 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 look at it on a on a uh, PC screen or whatever. But um, it's quite encouraging. It shows that there is a uh, there is a demand for this uh, or an interest in this. Uh, type of uh, archive, which is slightly unconventional. Um, it's obviously only going to be in the um, uh, the archives uh, in the Family History Centre in Swansea Civic Centre for as long as we are in there. And then um, when it transfers to the um, uh, the um, Astorva, the, the f former British Home Stores thing, it won't won't have there won't be space for it to fit in the search room however i do hope that the um the, the thing will uh, transfer over there as well because well this is almost like a test period for us to see how popular it is but my my instinct is that this could be a very popular way for people to uh, um to encounter a different type of archive and there's a lot of interest in uh, people watching old tv programs and the reason they're not being streamed uh, on and not available on the internet, unless they've been posted illegally on YouTube, which a lot lot of old TV is, but uh, is because of rights issues with regard to the uh, thing. So the National Library has the rights for these programs, and that's why we've had to create a, a legal agreement that the National Library of Wales has taken out a rental of us. Uh, a nominal square meter of our um, archive public area, and so the the um, uh, the programs are being screened on National Library territory, which agrees with the the rights agreement for for uh, viewing the programs. So um, I know that I uh, sent an invitation to the uh, members of the committee to come and have a look at the Wales Broadcast Archive after this uh, uh, meeting and I know that nobody's able to take up that offer but perhaps we can arrange a special meeting uh, 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 for people to, to come in at a, a later stage once this opens. I'm not quite sure about whether there'll be an opening ceremony on July the 11th. I know it's coming up very soon but I haven't been told by the National Library whether they're going to do anything formal so uh, uh, either on that date or shortly thereafter, uh, if members would like to come over and have a look at the uh, 
thing. And if it's not convenient for one date, we can maybe do a, a series of dates for um, members. Um, I'll take any questions on section one about use of the service. Um, I know I've skipped some sections there where we look at the um, analysis of uh, the um, who are where our users are coming from. So 42% 40, of our users come from Swansea, 16 from East Patalbert, 19% from the rest of Wales, 20% of our users come from England to use the service and 3% from overseas, which is an interesting uh, st statistic in its own right. Any questions for Ken? OK, I haven't used this before. Um, we are rather concerned, Neith, about the recording of statistics um, that um, West Morgan is there on a Monday and uh, they do record um, visitors, researchers. Um, we're concerned that on a Thursday, because um, we are just volunteers there, and the visitors are mostly our members. And um, we're um, rather concerned that uh, perhaps we are not being regarded as proper researchers. And actually, the apart from the uh, two volunteers on duty, the people who visit, the members that visit, are actually doing genuine research and should be recorded. Um, so a little bit concerned that the figures are not quite accurate in that respect. Yeah, if I could respond to that, I think we actually we did start recording the, the Thursday figures and you sent them through to me, but that that's dropped out of I'm very willing to put those figures in the report uh, if you're willing to set, send them through. Yes, um, and the reporting. Uh, uh, quarters are well as as you're probably familiar with so in in this case it's March to May so it's a matter of recording those but very happy to record them to the committee in terms of use of West Morgan archive so we can't include them in the uh, our stats to for example the National Archives and so on because we archive staff weren't involved in 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 that however i think the archives committee should be made aware of of, of that because the, the, obviously the neath mechanics institute is the um uh, uh one of the is the branch of uh the west morgan archives in 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 neath patolba so it's relevant to the archives committee and i'm very happy to put those in I and mean, we did start doing that and then it dropped out and it, to some extent, it relies on both of us to remember that we, we need to do that, do that. But, but I'm very happy to to include those regularly. Um, uh, but the use of the service, such as is reported to the um, Welsh Government and to um, the National Archives, w w archive staff would have to be present. Because uh, I know you also asked about the external events and talks and other things, but uh, the uh, the criterion there is always that an archive, a member of archive staff would have to be giving the talk or um, we also count um, uh, appearance at external events, which uh, in my case would normally be that I would be staffing a stall. Uh, we've been at external events you know, like the Swansea History Book Fair and so on, where, as you know, I'm present there and, and running the store. I've, one of the staff has got to be involved in order for it to go into the the um, those stats. So, the, but I'm very happy that it would be reported to the Archives Committee. I was just, I was just going to say that um, for the Archives Committee purposes, that uh, we feel it's important because um, the uh, Mechanics Institute is all, has always sort of been under review as regards um, if you don't use it, you lose it sort of thing. So this is our concern. I appreciate that. I, I do want to try to set your mind at rest that there isn't a don't use it, lose it in with regard to um, 
uh, the the way that I'm thinking or the way that Craig or Chris would be thinking uh, as well. That basically, we're all looking to uh, improve and increase usage of Mechanics Institute. We've had a number of uh, setbacks which have uh, reported on in the committee and there's more in, in this report uh, and I'm really sorry that and various number of things that happened we had the disaster with broadband the computers being uh, then needing to be replaced and so on but I'm hoping that we can get back to a normal service what I will say is to be balanced we haven't gone back to a normal service full service in Swansea yet as well so we are still closed in Swansea at lunch times I want to um, end that as soon as possible as well so what I'm really trying to do and it is a section further on is get back to a full staff contingent um, because we have uh, we've got people leaving faster than we can recruit at the moment so we we're, we're even more down than we were three months ago when at the last meeting so um, need to recruit recruit the staff, get back to a full staff contingent so that we can offer a full service to our customers, both in Neath and in Swansea. Um, sorry, Wayne, did you say? Yes, Wayne, you have your hand up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's a question to Kim, really, um, concern about people using the internet for ancestral research, Kim. How do our fees compare to what people pay online? And are the is the depth of research of equal quality? Thank you. Uh, yes, that's a really good question. So we provide free access to the Family History websites um, in the Family History Centre and in Neath as well. Um, What's happened, I think, that is that more people have decided that it's worth the money to to take out their own subscription. Uh, I think that happened during the lockdowns when we were close to the public, so people wanted things to do, you know, while they were confined to to home, and that so they took out uh, subscriptions. In whereas previously they might have thought, I'll just nip out. It's not not just the archives. I should say that every local library in Wales has free access to family his, history resources so uh, uh, and, and a number of museums as well I'm not sure that any of the local museums do but they the, the offer is, is courtesy of Welsh Government and it applies to libraries archives and museums and of course libraries are uh, community libraries are, are are very important it's it's important con uh, offer of community libraries as well and I think to be, it's fair to say that the uh, more and more, more people have actually decided to to purchase their own subscription simply for the convenience of working from home. And I think that you know having libraries and archives and museums close uh, stimulated a lot of people to to start paying. Um, uh, your second part of the question about the quality of research. Um, we used to have a member of staff uh, who had a very high knowledge of family history and um, and unfortunately she left during the um, uh, uh, while, while we were close to the public to go and work for the NHS and um, while the other staff are um, uh, uh, very familiar with family history I think it often requires somebody that's really keen on family history to enthuse people I think you know, we have been set back a lot by uh, the the last uh, couple of years, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can get back to um, uh, that uh, that situation. Certainly, with regard to Nice, I should just say that we don't have space for a family dedicated family history centre in the new um, premises in uh, in Swansea. So we're going to be losing that that part of our um, uh, our user base. But they haven't really come back since the uh, since the lockdowns anyway. I hope that answers the question for you. Yeah, I'm I'm always very conscious of the proportion of the residents of West Morgan who are not computer literate, and how we best uh, target them in terms of their use of the service 
if they can't go online with ancestry.com and do their own thing, you know. I don't know how we get that across to that sort of generation who's assumed to be uh, computer friendly and really they're not and would prefer the advice of uh, the archive service. Thank you. Yes, I, I do take that point. I do think it's a challenge going forward. I will just mention that we are in this we work alongside a library colleague, so I don't want to downplay the role of the two library services in Swansea and Neath for Talbot, which obviously uh, there are more community libraries across both local authorities and they uh, they also have services to family historians as well. Um, one of the things about the uh, Astorva is the, uh, the the Family History Centre will actually be in the local studies library in the thing. So we'll uh, the new facility will be for people using original documents, which is the the conti uh, c contingent which has come back to to using the archives. But um, yeah, the, uh, I very much take the point, and I do hope that we'll. Uh, capture back some of the family historians that we lost during the the period that Neath Mechanics Institute was closed. Thank you, Kim, and thank you, Chair. Um, uh, just following on from what Wayne said, um, we are concerned in Neath that uh, we have lost the hardcore of family historians. Um, you could virtually tell who would be coming in on a Thursday because they were regular, they were every week. And we are concerned now that they have um, deviated to the library where they've got 16 brand new computers. And will they come back to us? Um, it's going to be a problem, I think, to sort of encourage people to, to come back. Um, because at the moment, um, as you know, we haven't got computers up and running, so we've got nothing to offer them. Sure. We uh, yes, we got two computers up and running, and we've got f new computers that will shortly be with us. Um, uh, I've got a message from um, Neath Patoba IT saying that the computers should be with uh, with them shortly, and they will test test them and then um, install them um, shortly. So I do hope I can report better better news at the next meeting, which of course will be in, it won't be in Neath, it'll be in Port Talbot, won't it? It's normally because it's Neath Fair, isn't it? Yes, yeah. But, uh, hopefully there'll be better news at the next meeting about that. I'm pleased that we've got broadband up and running at least anyway, which has been a, a nightmare to work, to get that up and running again. So we are getting there slowly and we uh, have conversation after the meeting about staffing and so on. Was there a reason why the four, com sorry, was there a reason why the four computers have been disconnected? I mean, they're functional, they are, they are operational, but they've been disconnected. You know, they, they could have been um, su supplying um, a service, an interim service then until the new ones are. Sorry, uh, I think Andrew's on the call. I. Uh, I can't uh, quite remember the, what was wrong with the computers. Yes, um, the they were disconnected at the um, on the advice of Neath Talbot IT. <clears throat> they haven't been updated since before COVID, um, and it's a they're running a platform that's no longer supported. So basically, there's no. Uh, protection against viruses and so on. Um, and we figure that as well, they they were saying that as it's something that's provided to the public, it ought to be secure um, as, a, as a matter of, uh, of urgency. So that was why they were disconnected. It's not something that we have done under our own steam. It's something that's been done um, at the instigation of, of Nitney's Patalbert IT. Thanks, Andrew. I've forgotten. Um, if, sorry, if I if if I might add, in the meantime, um, and and um, and this is something that we have um, we set up in order to to, to provide a, a a secure, safe service to any family historians who do come in. 
um, archive staff will do the work for the members of the public, provide them with printouts and so on, um, using our own laptops. So it's not as though no services is providable. It is providable. Thanks, Andrew. Sorry, I'd f forgotten, uh, Jan, about the uh, the reason about the computers. If I could move on to the following sections. Uh, uh, regarding outreach and educational activity, there's a, a list in section two about the um, schools and groups that we've engaged with. I will just mention the archives annual report. Um, and there is a link there in the um uh, uh in the text to the annual report um so it's uh, now available online and it includes a number of local history articles it's, it's always an interesting read uh, uh, for the local history art articles if not for the uh for my uh, description of the year's activities but it's uh, um uh, it's it's aimed at a uh, broad uh section of the community in terms of it's a magazine format so it includes lots of pictures and um uh facts in small text boxes so that you can uh, it's uh, um uh, designed to be a, a good read uh, and also with it has six or five uh five or six local history articles relating to the uh both local authority areas, so um, um, written by archive staff, and then we've got one guest author this year from, um, as I mentioned in the report there, Catherine Stevens from Women's Archive Wales, looking at the um, uh, memorial of uh, uh, from the women of Wales to the um, the women of the United States, um, uh, petitioning them to for. Uh, the USA to join the League of Nations and that petition is 100 years old. It's come back to Wales this summer uh, to the National Library of Wales and it's going to be digitised and uh, made available digitally and they are calling for volunteers to help digitise the names. Uh, I've forgotten the per percentage of women of Wales who signed it but it is a huge um, social historical document as well as something that will be interest, of interest to family historians because uh, a high proportion of the women of Wales actually did sign it and so you know maybe some of um, uh, uh, our ancestors are, are mentioned in there. Uh, that was section two. Um, I should just pause for any questions about our outreach work. In which case I'll go on to the uh, the city centre hub, or as we're now learning to call it, a store of her, um, the store. Um, the work is still at the same stage as it was at the last meeting, uh, which is Reba stage four. So construction is still yet to start. And there is some quite significant work that's being un undergone with the design of the archives area. Um, if you're familiar with construction projects, you're probably aware that there's a process that's gone through uh, before stage four signed off, which is called uh, value engineering or VE, where it's looked at whether um, the same outcome could be achieved for a lower price. And the archives, as one of the more expensive elements of the design, is being VE'd quite um, uh, uh, quite a lot at the moment. So there's um, uh, various things that are, are being investigated relating to the um, uh, the storage area and the public area, and in particular the public area. But the with regard to the storage area, one of the things that I'm obviously on your behalf and on behalf of the collections. Um, absolutely adamant in maintaining is that the it should, must meet the British standard for archive storage. This is it's a slightly perilous time for um, uh, any uh, 
project when you go through value engineering because basically it's can we cut costs can we cut costs can we cut costs so what is really important is that the archive storage area must still meet the British standard for archival storage so um there have been one or two issues where we said that's going too far and uh you know that that won't work I've been really helped with the uh um external consultant the uh I would say that we've got huge value for money from having um, Chris Woods of the National Conservation Service uh, to provide advice simply because, you know, this is not my my specialism does not extend to um, archive buildings. It's not something that you tend to do much. Uh, most careers do not necessarily involve um, the creation of a new new building. Um, and so it, very reliant on external advice. And uh, I'm pleased to say that Swansea Council has also uh, independently been using um, Chris Woods as well. Um, he is the acknowledged expert on uh, the archival buildings. So um, uh, the, the key thing is to make sure that it works. And um, it will be slightly there is an element of experiment in the design in that it's not a conventional design and i've said this in previous meetings uh, uh quite a lot uh, uh, over the last couple of years in that it's not the natural thing to do to put the archive store on the top floor of a multi multi-use building in that um it will be subject to temperature and humidity fluctuations far more than if it were either in the basement or on the ground floor. I, th I think most people have a concept of archives somehow being linked to basements. And there's a natural natural thing there in that um, the, there is a lot of uh, temperature inertia stability in basement areas in that the, 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 the solid concrete block of the, the floor provides a, an element of insulation but also temperature um, stability so when you put the archive store two floors up in a multi-use building it's not it, it, there's going to have to be a lot of work to make sure that it um, it, it does maintain that uh, temperature and environmental stability um, humidity uh, stabi stability However, we have got two pieces of kit that have been, uh, during the course of this discussion, have been um, uh, installed, one of which will allow us to remove excess humidity from the um, uh, from the store uh, if the humidity starts to rise. And we've also got a automatic cooling system for the cavity skin. Uh, I think probably the easiest thing might be um, next meeting if we've got the final plans is I can actually put them up on screen and I can talk you through that uh, it's a bit difficult without having a uh, a plan to to uh, to show you but hopefully they will be finalized by then hopefully construction will have started and I can talk through the final uh, final design at that point I'll take any questions on section three if anybody would want to raise a question yeah, may I ask a question? Um, obviously, through this value engineering process, there may well be adaptations to the original spec, if I can put it that way. Um, but of course, what we must remember that it's still got to meet the standards for the accreditation, so it can't really go below what's already been agreed as what are those standards. If, if there are any changes, what's the next steps? Does that go to anybody to approve or is the reference back to the accreditation uh, body to make sure that everything is in, still in accordance with what they require? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so I think my role is essentially to stand as sort of like the doorkeeper to say uh, that that will uh, that will not work or uh, so uh, what, what's happening at the moment is that various ideas are being put forward um, could we do this could we do that and uh, my opinion sought in, in this regard I'm uh, also uh, uh, turned to our external advisor Chris Woods who I mentioned previously 
so I think most most questions get referred to him. Um, but we're also regulated by the National Archives and by Welsh Government. So uh, some of the um, changes, modifications will have to be run past them because at the end of the day, they will also have to sign it off. Um, with regard to accreditation, uh, we've already been uh, told that. So uh, just to backtrack a bit, um, we are currently provisionally accredited because uh, of the uncertainty around the move to new premises. So um, our accreditation, compliance with the accreditation standard ended, just trying to think, 2022, I think, I think it was for six years in 2016. So, um, and so our provisional accreditation has been extended, uh, uh, our accreditation has been extended provisionally for since that date. And we've been told that uh, in order to re achieve the accreditation standard, we'll have to submit one year of environmental readings from the new strong room. Um, so this is why I'm really keen to um, uh, to make sure that we have the means to control the temperature and humidity in the in the archive storage area, because upon that will be dependent our compliance with the, the accreditation standard when we resubmit. Uh, and also we'll also need to update many of our um, uh, policies to suit the new premises. So, for example, working on a new security strategy and uh, other other documents which will have to be submitted. So there is a lot that is quite fluid at the moment. You know, I can't guarantee at this point to say the West Morgan Archives will achieve accreditation when it reapplies in uh, 2024. Um, what I'm trying to do is make sure that A, I maintain contact with the experts. Uh, so, you know, obviously we've got staff who've got a uh, long track record of experience of working with the archives, but however, this issue of um, the design of buildings, uh, conservation generally and so on, we, we do need external um, advice. So knowing who to ask, making sure that we liaise with the regulators, the Welsh Government and the National Archives, and uh, making sure that we uh, carry out the procedure in a proper manner and that it's also recorded. All those things matter. Um, uh, and I can't say, you know, 100% to you all today, well, we will achieve the accreditation standard. It's it's um, uh, it's obviously something that we we aim to do, but we, we're we just going through a process. So um, um, and then it will be up to the panel to decide whether it, it meets the standard. Uh, 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 probably not, not worth uh, labouring the point too much, but you know the, the element of the design, which is experimental, it puts an element of, of risk around that. We just hope that this this works, and we taking the best advice that the um, temperature and humidity will remain stable. But it's not a conventional place to put an archive storage um, area. Um, on the on the top floor of the uh, uh, multi-use building. Thank you. A any other questions for Kim? <clears throat> I should just add about that there is a also a, a running in parallel feasibility study for a regional archive facility, which was a condition of grant from um, Welsh government, who've invested quite a lot of money in. Uh, the city centre hub, and that's proceeded, proceeding. Sorry, the uh, the work, and it's due for completion round about the middle of July. Um, so that will be available at at some point um, uh, in the um, next next month. So that that is a study that's taking place in con uh, conjunction with. The Rich Burton Archives and South Wales Minus Library from Swansea University, and also from University of Wales Trinity St David, who have their own archives which are not publicly available, and also um, small uh, charity called Jazz Heritage Wales, which is also uh, part of the scheme, um, and that that work will um, 
result in a, a report which I hope will be able to be shared with members of the committee in due course. I will move on if um, that's OK. If there are no questions to be taken. Um, staff uh, mentioned and I mentioned to Mrs Watkins earlier that we are somewhat um, uh, we've got staff leaving faster than we can recruit at the moment, and um, we are rather down on staff. Uh, what I'm hoping by the next meeting that we'll have our full staff contingent and we'll have moved back to our proper pre COVID opening hours. But it's um, uh, the key thing about not being able to. Um, uh, to go back to our opening hours is the shortage of staff, not any other um um uh issue um with regard to nice it's not nothing to do with the broadband or, or lack of computers it's simply that we haven't uh we we are carrying several vacancies and we were always quite hard pushed to maintain our opening hours even with a full uh contingent of staff and um uh so my my viewpoint has always been that you have to provide a reliable level of service. So if we can't, if we're going to have to close facilities because of staff shortage, the, our customers, our user base gets unsure as to whether we're actually going to be open or not. So it's better to be cautious rather than say we can guarantee um, that we will open at such a thing and then fail to provide that level of service. So I have adopted a cautious approach, but I do hope that we will be able to get back to our um, opening hour, full opening hours in Swansea and Nice uh, in due course when we've recruited to these vacant posts. But no, it was bad before. We didn't have an archive trainee. We had um, a member of staff that I mentioned who departed during the to to work with the NHS, and um, uh, we that tip the balance uh, so that we weren't able to to go back to our uh, opening hours before. So it's it's a cautious approach, but I think it's m better that we can guarantee that we will be open than that we offer. Uh, we promise too much and then we can't deliver the opening hours. So there's not to my mind, there's nothing worse than uh, a member of the public turning up at uh, um, a venue and then finding a note on the door to say that we're closed due to staff shortage. So um, I hope that we can get back to full staff contingent in due course. Thanks, Kim. Yes, I, I think that's a very, very good point. Nothing uh, is guaranteed really to to lose customers, if I put it that way, than uh, something like that. The two po posts that you mentioned, um, there, are they going to be re uh, filled? Yes, so yeah. we're, we're advertising. We're uh, interviewing for one of the posts this afternoon, and I'm hoping that we uh, can get back to full continuity. I'll report at the next meeting. It's It's been a long process, but uh, officers uh, on the call will be quite familiar how involved the process of recruitment can be. In the, it has to be advertised internally to the redeployment pool first, and then internally, and then externally. So it, it takes takes quite some time and all this drags on a bit really so all I can say is I'm sorry you know uh, the um, it has had this effect on uh, uh, well both in Swansea and in Neath I've tried to balance it so that it's not one of those venues that is suffering more than the other so uh, you know it, if I said we were back to our full opening hours in Swansea and not in Neath I think that would be very unfair. So it's it's better to to share the uh, uh, share it between the two venues. Thank you, Kim. Any questions? Further questions for for Kim? Kim. Okay. And just finally, the um, uh, there's notes there on the training, the professional meetings that we've been to, and uh, the archives that have been received during the last quarter, which is uh, uh, as as usual, as a, a list in Appendix 1. Uh, I'll take any questions or comments about either those last sections or anything that we've discussed in the meeting.
Uh, no further questions uh, from anybody no, or observations, comments. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, Kim. Uh, the uh, the usual uh, very eclectic and interesting collection of accessions. It's always uh, intriguing to read through them to see who's deposited what. And in some cases, it's, it's not no, but a very interesting uh, collection. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Kim. Uh, some interesting points have come out of the meeting. Uh, look forward to the launch of the um, uh, broad broadcast archives uh, on, on the 11th and let's hope that that brings people in often if there's something new then people will come into something and that perhaps that generates some interest and maybe at some point uh, perhaps some promotion could be done around the fact that it is a free service the the, the ancestry and people don't have to pay and and maybe um, you know that will help to bring people back in, into into archives uh, but if they're using the the library facilities as well people change their ways of working don't they so i think we have to be conscious that it may never return to what it was before but i think the the figures indicate that actually the interest is still there and it is it is building back so that's positive news thank you all very much indeed for your contributions once again a very interesting meeting and i look forward to seeing you all last time but before we go i would like to thank Craig very much indeed for the um, for the uh, safe stewardship of the archives under under your watch so to speak and we will miss you going forward but a very warm welcome as I said at the beginning of the meeting to Chris Saunders and um, yes we look forward to, to that so so thank you very much Craig. Thank you, Chair. Indeed, and thank you to all members of the committee. It's been a, a very interesting committee to serve on, and I've been grateful for the support as well. And my thanks, particularly to, to Kim and Andrew. They they do a sterling job, obviously, trying to take this service forward, and I very much enjoyed working with them and also the antiquarians over the last couple of years as well. So, um, thank you very much, and, and good luck to everyone. And hopefully, see you in different times in different ways. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Craig. Thank you all, um, and that brings the meeting to a conclusion. Thank you all very much.